You may think this will never happen to you, never happen to any of your friends or loved ones. I used to think that. The sad truth is that now no one in our city, no one in our state, no one in our country has that luxury anymore. Powerful words from Louisville Mayor and gun violence survivor Craig Greenberg as our community continues to grapple with Monday's mass shooting. Five people, all bank employees, were killed when a gunman opened fire at the old National Bank in downtown Louisville. Eight others were hurt. We're hearing from the shooter's family for the first time. This is a statement. It came in late last night from Connor Sturgeon's family. It reads, no words can express our sorrow, anguish, and horror at the unthinkable harm our son Connor inflicted on innocent people, their families, and the entire Louisville community. We mourn their loss and that of our son Connor. We pray for everyone traumatized by his senseless acts of violence and we're deeply grateful for the bravery and heroism of the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department. While Connor, like many of his contemporaries, had mental health challenges, which we as a family were actively addressing, there were never any warning signs or indications he was capable of this senseless and shocking act. While we have many unanswered questions, we will continue to cooperate fully with law enforcement officials and do all we can to aid everyone in understanding why and how this happened. In an update, UofL Hospital says three victims are still being treated. One of them, Officer Nicholas Wilt, is still in critical condition. The LMPD has shared body camera video from Officer Wilt and Officer Corey Galloway. They were first on the scene. Jim Stratman is live right now in downtown Louisville breaking this video down. Jim, good morning. Good morning, Haley and Eric. And yes, we are going to be breaking down that body cam footage in just a minute, but we just want to show you really quickly how the memorial down here outside the old National Bank building has grown. I'll step out and you can see kind of the flowers and the signs that are out in front. Five crosses, one for each of the victims who were, mur who were killed during this shooting. Now, yesterday we had a chance to talk here on GMK with Interim Police Chief Jacqueline Gwyn Villarreal, and she reiterated the response from the officer talking about how brave it was and how their response limited the casualties to just just those five victims and really saving more lives. Uh, I will warn you, we're going to show you some of the body cam footage that we that was released yesterday, and it may be graphic to some viewers. You may uh, just want to have that warning out there before we start to play this. Now, the video that we are showing you is going to be first from Officer Nicholas Wilt. He was uh, on scene along with Officer Corey Calloway. You can see that they pull up to the bank in this footage and there is still gunfire going on. You can hear that those pops on the video. Louisville Metro Police say that the shooter, 23 year old Connor Sturgeon, was an active employee at the bank. They told us yesterday that Sturgeon walked into that bank armed with a legally purchased AR-15 before the bank opened and he began firing into a conference room where bank employees were having a meeting. Now, later on in that video, Officer Wilt and Officer Galloway are both struck by bullets. Officer Galloway falls back to wait for backup before finally taking the shot that kills Sturgeon. You can see the tension in, in that video. Uh, you can understand the stress that those officers are going through. Um, response wasn't perfect, but it was exactly the response we needed. Um, I think I would, I would love to have either one of those officers ride with me any day. These off Three of them. Now, both of those officers were taken to the hospital after that shooting. Of course, Officer Wilt still listed in critical condition after he was shot in the head. Now, we have been asking for the last couple of days to get more information on Officer Wilt's condition. As of right now, all we're knowing, all we know is that he is in critical condition. And of course, uh, we have been reaching out for more information and we have been talking with family members and friends of the victims, the five victims that you can see memorialized behind me. And of course, this memorial has grown over the last number of days, the last uh, 24 hours even. We were here earlier yesterday where it was just a few flowers. Now you can see bouquets, plenty of crosses, all signifying the loss of life that this community is trying to heal with. Reporting in Louisville, Jim Stratman, WHAS 11 on your side. Jim, thank you. Uh, that memorial that Jim mentioned honored these five people, Joshua Barrick, Jim Tutt, Tommy Elliott, Juliana Farmer, Dina Eckert. It says they will always be remembered. WHAS 11's Grace McKenna spoke with those who knew the victims best. Tommy Elliott, 63, an old national exec, one of the first names we learned, remembered by a governor, 
grieving. Tommy Elliott helped me build my law career. Helped me become governor. Gave me advice on being a good dad. He's one of the people I talk to most in the world and very rarely were we talking about my job. Joshua Barrick, 40, mourned Monday by a congregation he called home. He's just involved. I mean, go, he would come to mass. He would be involved in prayer groups. He would um, coach, uh, just had a lot of friends, just a lovely, lovely man. Dina Eckert, 57, passed away hours after the shooting. Her cousin says she fought hard, fitting for the family's fierce protector. She never, ever had anything bad to say about anybody. So to see this happen to her and her being taken from us, it's just not fair and it doesn't make sense. Juliana Farmer, 45, who friends said had a grandchild on the way, we've seen an outpouring of love online for the woman we're told just moved here weeks ago. And Jim Tut, 64. A colleague, developer Joseph Waldman, who would visited the bank many times, says they talked just as much about family as business. He was in the, in the, he was 60, in his 60s, he was young, he was full of life. He just was a special, good person. And to see something like this happen is just, uh, breaks my heart. He wants to rename the road to this Southwest Jefferson County development, honoring Jim's work and life and the path forward for Louisville, a city mourning and missing these five souls. Grace McKenna, WHAS 11, on your side. Today, the city is hosting a vigil to remember the victims and pray for healing for those that are still in the hospital. It starts at 5 tonight at the Muhammad Ali Center. In a press conference yesterday, Mayor Craig Greenberg said we aren't meant to go through these tough times alone. This vigil will be to acknowledge the wounds, physical and emotional, that gun violence leaves behind. It will be an interfaith opportunity for our entire community to come together, to grieve, to heal, to begin to move forward. We'll have coverage of the vigil in its entirety right here on WHAS 11. Special live coverage begins at 4 before the vigil, and at 5 you will be able to watch that vigil on air online and at, on our free WHAS 11 app. As we come together in this time of crisis, many of you are wondering and asking out loud, what can I do? One thing is you can give blood. UofL's Chief Medical Officer Jason Smith said they use 170 units of blood to treat victims of the mass shooting. That's what they had on hand and uh, ready to go. He says that far outpaces the hospital's capacity and he credited the Red Cross for getting them the extra blood that they use to save lives. So if you want to donate, head to redcrossblood.org.